Okay, right. So to find the average gradient between two points on a curve, um, so if I have a curve and between any two points on the curve, I want to find the average gradient. Now, if I look at the various gradients along the curve, you can see that it's changing. The gradients of the tangents to the curve will be, um, be changing the whole time. And if I want to find the average gradient, in effect, what you are doing what you need to do is to find all these gradients along the curve, which there are infinitely many of them there, um, and then add them up together and divide them by the amount there is, and then that will give me the average gradient along the curve, but um, we actually also know in mathematics that all of these gradients added together finding an average dividing by the amount there is will just be the same as the gradient of the straight line just going through the, these two points on the curve so you can still when you need to find the average gradient you can still just um, use the gradient formula the difference in y's over the difference in x's which you've always used before um, and just work with that so now in this example they say given that uh, the function hx that looks like this, calculate the average gradient. So I can use uh, this formula, the gradient average is the difference in y's over the difference in x's. Um, calculate the average gradients between uh, the point p minus 1yp and q2yq. But now, um, they did not give me the y value, so I must just go and calculate that first. So let's find um, the function h in the point where x is minus 1, because that's going to give me that y. So I have minus x cubed plus 3 over 2x squared plus 6x, um, where x is negative 1. Right. Um, and that you can actually just use your calculator for. I think it is um, minus three and a half or minus seven over two. But let's just quickly check. Minus one squared uh, plus six negative one minus seven over two. Right, so that is minus seven over two. So I have the point P. Um, which is negative 1, negative 7 over 2. That's the one point I'm working with here. And the next point I'm working with here, I'm just going to substitute 2 into the formula. So I have negative x cubed plus 3 over 2x squared plus 6x. And I'm going to substitute 2 in there. And then if I just change all of the negative ones on my calculator to a 2, um, you'll see that you get 10. Okay, so then I have the point Q, which is 2, 10. Right, and then I can just actually find the gradient between these two points. So I'm going to do the difference between the y's, which is 10 subtract negative 7 over 2 over 2 subtract negative 1 and then you can actually just substitute that into your calculator it would become a plus there but if you put the minus minus into your calculator it will still give you the same answer then um, over 2 minus minus 1 or 2 plus 1 and that is uh, 9 over 2 or 4 and a half right which means the average gradient there between those two points on this function will be 9 over 2 or 4 and a half. Right, um, now in this question, this is a little bit more trickier. They give me a function minus 2x squared plus 1, and they say show that the average gradient between the two points where x is 3 and x is 3 plus h, uh, where h is not 0 because that means I have both x is 3, um, I'm going to show that the average gradient is this. Right, so now the average gradient, um, as I said, 
you can still just use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and you'll see in the notes attached to this video um, that I say there that um, notice when it's an x and an x plus h that it looks like the formula um, for deriving from first principles a lot without the limit involved. Um, so that's actually where that formula comes from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, like I did the h in this x value and h in the other x value, those are my y values. So I'm going to take f in the place of 3, which is the first one, and that would just be minus 2, 3 squared plus 1. Um, just like I did with this one, um, and this is negative 17. I just want to make completely sure with my calculator also. Um, not that I don't trust my brain. Uh, it's just it's just that our brains are, are human and it is fatal. Um, fatal is not the word. It does make mistakes sometimes. And especially if you're writing exam, just double check a thing or two sometimes with your calculator. Um, with your calculator even if you're all able to do it with your head right um, so this will then be minus 2 and if I multiply this double bracket out it's going to become um, 9 plus 3h plus 3h which is plus, plus 6h plus h squared I trust that you know how to multiply a bracket out and then I'm going to multiply the negative 2 in, so I have minus 18 minus 12 h minus 2 h squared plus 1. Okay, so this actually becomes um, minus 2 h squared minus 12 h minus 18 plus 1, which is minus 17. Right, so these are my y values that corresponds with these x values. If I can just put it in the same perspective as that question, where x is 3, I have the y value negative 17. And where x is 3 plus h, I have the y value minus 2h squared minus 12h minus 17. Right. Okay, so um, I'm just going to not just substitute this directly. I just want to put a step in between where I show you that now this um, second y value comes from substituting 3 plus h into my function. This is my first, uh, the second y value. The first y value, the minus 17, will be that. And then my first, my second x value was that, 3 plus h minus 3, that value. Just to show you um, if that 3 minus 3 becomes 0, that this looks like the um, limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h minus f in a place x over h. It looks like that formula. Um, that is when you work with two x values. That is a, a x value and x plus h um, distances apart from one another. So that's just handy to know this. Um, I'm just going to substitute this then in. This is now this whole sentence, which is minus 2h squared minus 12h minus 17. And I'm going to subtract negative 17 there over. And then 3h, 3 plus h minus 3, I already said is just going to be h. Right. And then, <coughs> sorry, um, Minus 17 plus 17 is actually going to become 0. So I just have minus 2h squared minus 12h over h. And then I can take out h common factor there. Leaving me with, you can actually take out a minus 2 common factor. But I just want to actually cancel the h's. That's why I'm not taking out the biggest common factor. I'm just taking out a factor. Um, because I want to cancel those. If I take out the minus 2, you can do that. But then I have to multiply it in again um, at the end. So I'm not going to take it out. Okay, right. And they wanted me to show that the average gradient is 
minus 12 minus 2h, which indeed it is, right? So this is average gradient. Um, the second example is, is typically what you can expect from average gradient. So it's a good idea to just have a proper look at that.